to be your president. And we have a very exciting day for you. The uh, quote for the day, working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. The author of this is Simon Sinek. Roger uh, Hajea is going to, Tadawi is going to do our uh, reflection today. Are you with us? Uh, working on the technology here. Raj, are you with us? Okay. Well, we'll just move right on. We do have announcements for you uh, in case you haven't heard. Judy Witt, Witt lost her mother uh, of 103 a uh, week to 10 days ago. Uh, again, the club will send condolences, but you may want to reach out to Judy mm -hmm. and her family. Also, Jim Bright has put at the tables the brochures on the Rotary Toast. Again, this is gonna be a lovely evening. It's a chance for our club and the two other clubs to glow. And you'll hear more about glowing later on in the program. But tickets are gonna go quickly because CASA is buying up a lot of them. So if this November 3rd event is something you wanna to go to, and I highly encourage you to go, you need to sign up as soon as possible. Join me when that sign up. Also, I sent an email out, and I'm sure Shannon will talk about the training session on September 9th at Ivy Tech. And again, I encourage you to sign up, particularly if you are a chairman of a committee, it would be wonderful for you to do that. Now, introducing our many guests is Steve Engel. <laughs> oh. While we're waiting for Steve, let me announce birthdays. Lauren Snyder, tomorrow, August 9th. We have some member anniversaries. Steve Engel, 12 years, and Megan Neese, seven years. So, introduction of guests, Steve. Well, thank you uh, for the guests who uh, came today. As I uh, read your name, if you could stand up so we could properly uh, welcome you. First, uh, people are our guests, uh, my guests, uh, Mark and Patty Peterson, who've recently moved to Bloomington, and Mark's joining Rotary today. Uh, and uh, Babette Ballinger is a guest of Rosie Leary. Babette? Uh, then uh, Becky, you or her, Hill. I, I see. Okay. Best of Joy Hardy. And uh, Cassandra Elsie, Hus Husley. Cassandra, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> From the Sunrise Club. She's visiting. Welcome and uh, thanks for coming. Thank you, Steve, and welcome to our, our guests. Uh, we hope you enjoy your time with us today. If you want to learn more about Rotary, obviously uh, talk to your host or any of us that are here. We'll be glad to share all about Bloomington Rotary and what a fantastic organization we are. We do have, as uh, Steve indicated, a new member installation, and Steve's going to help me with that. And we have other members. Jim Sims is going to help. And if you'd come up and we can have the installation at this point. And Forrest Gilmore, come on up. And yeah, absolutely. <laughs> come on up, Mark. Yeah. 
I am honored to provide the introduction for Mark Peterson today, the bio. Mark moved to Southern Minnesota with his parents after his father graduated from Indiana University with a doctorate and became a college professor of economics at Mankato State College. He ended up at the University of Minnesota and graduated with a degree in civil engineering and after which he was recruited by Inland Steel and moved to East Chicago, Indiana, the region there. This started a career focused on project and construction management in heavy industrial facilities, primarily in the steel business. Along the way, he received his MS uh, in management from Purdue. We won't hold that against him, and, 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 and not today, right, as Jim said, and held several management positions in several firms, including CEO of a mid-size engineering firm in Northwest Indiana. In the end, Mark went back to the work he enjoyed most, being a field construction manager, and worked his last major project in 2021. Outside of business, life involved working with the high school music boosters as president and head bingo caller. Right on. If we ever need that. We got to pay attention to that. Being a member of the church council and president of the soft softball league. For many years, he sang in the church choir, and since moving south, he is currently singing with the Celebration Singers in Jasper, Indiana. He and his wife, Patty, have five kids and seven grandchildren scattered across the country, including one here in Bloomington, and enjoy the challenge of trying to keep up with them. In 2022, they sold the condo in, they had in Chicago and bought a house in Bloomington, finding the light and which they renovated and moved into in March of 2023. All right. Very exciting. Welcome. Oh, yeah, you wrote that so well. You did right, right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Mark Peterson. I'm probably one of the few people have to take his glasses off to read. Mark Peterson, on behalf of the board and the membership of the Bloomington Rotary Club, it is a great pleasure to welcome you as the newest member of our club. We look forward to the fellowship that we will share, as well as your participation in the club projects that make our club, our community, our country, and our world a better place. Though Rotary is not a political organization, Rotarians are vitally concerned with good citizenship and the election of effective leaders to public office. While Rotary is not a religious organization, it is built on those highest principles that have served as a moral compass for people throughout the ages. Rotary is, is an organization of business, professional, and community leaders pledged to uphold the highest ethical and moral standards. Rotarians believe that worldwide fellowship and peace can be achieved when people work together and uphold the Rotary motto of service above self. Rotary activities exemplify the partnership, respect, and generosity that one would expect from people who believe they have a responsibility to help others. Mark, you have been chosen for membership in the Bloomington Club because your fellow members believe you to be a leader in our community and because you possess the qualities to champion the message and principles of Rotary. You are a representative of your vocation and talents within our club and community. You have now become an ambassador of Bloomington Rotary carrying the ideals of service to all within your sphere of influence. Our community will know and judge Rotary by your character. That takes a look back, yes. <laughs> and service. We will also look to you for inspiration as we strive to become better Rotarians. We will now pin you with the distinguishing badge of a Rotarian, your Rotary pin. We ask that you wear your Rotary pin with pride, not only to all Rotary functions, but in your many endeavors as a symbol of your commitment to Rotary ideals and our recognition of your contribution towards a better world. Fellow Rotarians, please rise if you are able and welcome our newest Rotarian, Mark Peterson. Gotta wait for a Kodak moment. And by the way, a shout out to Alan Barker. If you haven't seen this, take a look at the new brochure that's been developed. 
and he spearheaded the committee. But in fact, some of you will see some very famous Rotarians and see their own picture. As I introduce our district governor, I, I need to tell you that I've been ordered to keep it brief. And uh, I understand the chain of command and I will attempt to do that. But she's a Missourian. She was born in Missouri, lived in and raised in Houston, Texas, worked in Atlanta and discovered Southern Indiana in 2007. And we're glad you came to Indiana. A very active Rotarian. Uh, Shannon has been recognized in her club as the new Rotarian of the Year, Rotarian of the Year, and District 6580's President of the Year. She has also served her club in membership, visioning chair, public relations chair, and many other committees. Her heart and blood pumps Rotary. And I think you will see that today when you hear from our new district governor, Shannon O'Toole. Shannon? Welcome. Thank you. And you guys, I'm used to walking around when I talk, but I know that we're um, definitely embraced and engaging Zoom. So hi, y'all that are on Zoom. Um, thank you for the warm welcome. Today, I have just a few goals. I um, want to tell you a little bit about myself. I want to tell you about our rotary theme of creating hope in the world. I want to tell you more about these glow grow, these little bright flashy lights that I've heard a lot of people remarking on. And then I want to share um, some of our goals, some of our goals for our district. And um, a few of you guys know a little bit about me, but just to share some information about me that, um, it's funny because I don't see the cameras exactly, but I can see them over here, um, that you may or may not know. And Ron mentioned it, I love Rotary. I ooze Rotary, Rotary has changed my life. I will share with you some of the reasons why, and you'll hear it through some of the things that I'm gonna talk about, but I really do love Rotary, and I want everyone to figure out how they want to embrace Rotary, and I'll encourage you to get to learn more about Rotary so you'll love Rotary too. Um, I love my dogs, Maggie and Mahomes. You guys, usually when I say Maggie and Mahomes, that also tells you that I'm a sports fan. Anyone guess what team? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty easy. Um, so I was born in Kansas City. I was born the week of the first Super Bowl. So officially I was there. So I've been a Chiefs fan through all the ups and downs, all, all the years that the Chiefs have been around, but we're kind of on a high right now, which is good for us Kansas City folks. Um, I also have a new hobby. And if anybody, who out there, does anyone smoke foods? Anybody have a, like a Traeger or a pellet grill? Anyone? I know there's more people out there, a couple. Okay, so I'm competitive and I've been, I'm hooked on that. And anyone that follows me on Facebook has seen my creations and I'm loving smoking meat. I feel like it's the best thing. It gets rid of all the fat, you know, you do all kinds of good stuff. But I mentioned this, actually, I didn't even have to mention it. One of the club presidents came up, Matt M Millies, if anyone knows him from New Albany, um, came to me and said, we should do a contest. We need to do a district contest, not just a contest. So his idea was talk to every club and find out who smokes meats, who's really into smoking meats and have everybody have a contest. And your vote for who the winner in your club is, is a foundation buck. So maybe votes are $20 or something like that. I love this idea because it's competitive and you all that's I'm a competitor. I like to win. I like to be first. So um, I don't think every club needs to do that, but I think it would be fun. And some clubs are like, oh, we smoke. We smoke meats. And um, so it would just be a cool thing. And then if, if we can get club winners, we'll figure out how to do it in the district. I like that. So um, anyway, that leads me. I just I want to share our theme, creating hope in the world. Um, it means a lot to me creating hope in the world. I'll point out our banner right here. Gordon McNally picked our theme, creating hope in the world with an emphasis on mental health and taking the stigma out of asking for help. You guys, that's, 
a big challenge and it's very meaningful to me. Um, creating hope in the world can go so many different directions. But if you read our Rotary Magazine or any of the stories that have come out, the big focus is definitely on mental health. And um, mental health is something that affects everybody. It affects our communities. It affects millions of people around the world. And it affects people with or without access. It affects everybody. I wanna share with you a story and I, I do apologize, some of my notes are usually on a big piece of paper like this and they're not today. So I'm having to read my phone. So I'm doing the glasses thing too. But um, if we create hope in the world um, and take the stigma out of asking for help, it'll affect a lot of people. Gordon and I have a similar, similar situation. Um, Gordon's brother, committed suicide many years ago. So that's why he says, take the stigma out of asking for help. Well, during COVID, my sister-in-law did the same thing. And she left behind um, four children, three nephews and a niece. It's not my story to tell. Um, I don't know what was going on by all, by everything we could see visually, great mom, um, very involved very well-to-do family. She was the state auditor for the pharmaceutical for the state of I Iowa. My brother's a prosecuting attorney. So, I mean, they had most of the things they want, just very busy. Their kids are super active. But what happened when I got the phone call is I didn't have the resources to be helpful. I didn't have the resources to be Aunt Shannon and to be my brother's sister. I didn't know what to do. That's where creating hope, that's where access, that's where giving, giving people power comes from. What I did is I turned to Rotary. Anyone know Melissa Stone in here? We had a nice long conversation that night because I didn't even know how to call my niece or call my nephews. And she said, she said Shannon, they're gonna be immediately surrounded by people. They're gonna feel a lot of love right away. She gave me the tools and the resources and the power to be there later. She said, be there right now, listen to them, talk to them, but don't try and overdo it. They're gonna be surrounded. But in six weeks, in a, six months, in a year, that'll go away in their community. And so I turned to Rotary, found the resources and the tools to be able to be the fantastic Aunt Shannon that I am. And um, just to let you know, they're doing pretty well right now. My niece is about to turn 16. My nephew just turned 15. My other nephew will be 13 later this month. Um, they were Irish twins, 11 months apart. So, so you guys, they're, most of the kids are right there together. The other is 22, but they're doing really well. And it's because they have turned and have had resources for their health as well. Um, uh, they've got social workers, they do therapy, all of that. The point I bring and, and the reason we don't know when mental health issues or when problems are gonna arise in any of our lives. Most of us are affected somehow in our families, in our communities, in our neighborhoods with mental health. We also have to remember that not everybody has the same ability that my brother had with his kids. We've got people in, uh, un, in areas in our communities that don't have the same privilege. So they don't have the same access. So I think we need to really reach out and um, share, share our access, use our influence as Rotarians to reach out and say, it's okay to not always be okay. I think that's important. Um, and I share that without my note. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, it's a deep story. I have to laugh so that I don't cry with it, but um, it's a deep story and I can't imagine somebody not having the resources or the ability that I had. Um, our communities don't all have that. So, um, so Rotarians, we have a lot of influence. We have a lot of partnerships. And I know there's people in this room that deal with other health issues and mental health issues. I've, I've met some of you guys today. So I ask us to, to find ways to partner, to really get our message out there. Um, to really reach to those that may not have the same access or the same privilege that we do in our own clubs or in our own, in our own lives. Um, I do want to talk to you about the Glow Grow. 
I am so used to moving around, y'all. <laughs> um, I do want to talk to you about these Glow Grow. People have asked. There's one on the table when you checked in. There's one over by the desserts. Thought that was a good place because the desserts are great, right? Um, this was inspired by a Vincennes Rotarian. He had no idea that he was inspiring this Glow Grow flashy bright thing. On Friday afternoon in March, they put up a Facebook post saying, we're gonna have a glow in the dark golf scramble. By Monday, 26 teams with a waiting list. It sold out $75 per person. <laughs> so indeed, people are attracted to things that glow. Pretty simple. Um, and I believe that. Who likes glowy, shiny things? I do. <laughs> Most of us, right? If you see something shining and something that stands out, do you take an interest in it or at least look at it, maybe from the side? But it piques curiosity, right? Um, it, makes, it makes you go, wow, that's pretty cool. It's a simple message. You know, I'm in marketing. Simple messages can be the best. Simple messages can mean something different to every person. So when you see this Glow Grow rotary with the rotary emblem, imagine what it means to you. Think to yourself about what that means because it can mean something different to everybody. To me, if we glow a light on the things that we do within rotary, it'll make rotary grow. If we glow a light on the amazing outfit, just amazing things that we do. I mean, you're youth, just in this club, you're, and I, I don't have these notes in front of me, I apologize, but your work with refugees, your work with youth, your, you guys have so many different projects going on at the same time. If you glow a light on those and shine a light on the things that Rotary does in your community, you're bound to continue to grow. And I, I say that, to the club that has grown by 50% over the past couple of years. Yay! You guys, it's outstanding. And that, that means you are glowing. That means you are. And I love how Ron used that earlier. He said, we're gonna glow. Because that's, that's really important. It's really important to me. So the other thing I think of with glowing is people with hope tend to glow. There is a, there's the saying glowing with hope. So hope and glowing, if you have a positive out, attitude, if you have a positive outlook, if you have, if you're no longer hungry, if you have, 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 have not had a home and all of a sudden you have shelter, you tend to glow. So I look at it as glowing in so many different ways. Glowing helps create hope in the world. People with hope glow. They become more radiant and it's a very positive message. So, um, so glowing with hope and growing rotary to me tie very well together. So you guys think about how you can incorporate this all the time. Everyone doesn't have to carry around shiny flashy things. I like it, but you don't have to shine or glow all the time. Glowing with hope is not always literal. It's usually not. But you think about the people that glow when they have difference, when they have hope in their life. It's not, it's not flashy and shiny, but it subtle differences. You can see it in people's eyes, right? You can see differences. So I do want to talk about some of our, some of our goals um, this year. And in order to talk about our goals, I want you guys to realize in order to reach our membership or our foundation goals, people need to know a lot about Rotary. And people need to know what Rotary does in the world, not just in your club. I was going to do the math, but you guys have about 150 members and there's more than 1.4 million Rotarians. So imagine multiplying it by that 0 0.0001. I promise I wasn't going to do the math, but that's about the amount of Rotarians in this club compared to worldwide. But imagine everybody having the same hearts and having those same service minds and servient minds in their communities. This is happening in every country in the world, over 200 countries in the world. Um, so I wanna tell you some stories about why I donate to the Rotary Foundation. And I wanna share what Rotary really does 
worldwide. For me, rotaries, I told you rotaries changed my life because I keep finding new rotary moments. Rotary has made me a better person because I keep finding new rotary moments that I embrace. Found them a long time ago. Um, Jim's, Jim's got his face down back there, but when um, Jim, Jim was our district governor, I had my first rotary moments. His, his theme was be a gift to the world. And um, I embraced that. Once I embraced it, I learned so much more about rotary. So we have these themes for a reason. So when you figure out your reason, because they can mean be a gift to the world can mean a lot of things too, kind of like create hope, right? Um, but I'm going to tell you about three things that are recent. One of them is really recent. Um, I have a friend named Eric. He's a Southern Illinois Rotarian, and he's been going to Nepal for like 20 plus years through Rotary. He's been going to Nepal. The first time when he started going to Nepal, his first jobs were to buy kids from slavery. Sounds awful, right? So in Nepal, they had a dowry and a, that one, their kids were worth that one time dowry. It's horrible. He's been going back every year. He started training, teaching skills, working with women and children um, to give them power and ability and education. If you guys ever go to pets, you've probably met him. He's the guy that sells jewelry in the house of friendship. So pretty amazing. So over the course of the last 20 or so years, he continues to go to Nepal. This February, you guys, this is all done through Rotary. This February, those same families were building schools for their kids to get an education. So those same families that used to sell kids for a one-time dowry, and I'm saying that word wrong, aren't I? For, so that for a one-time amount of money um, are now building schools. And they're building schools so their kids have an education and have value and bring value back to the family. And they get to live in their same homes and be raised by their parents. So they, they wrote through Rotary that culture has changed in the community that he's been going to year after year after year. Rotary does that. Rotary stays with projects until we figure it out. I'm gonna share a story about my friend, Amy. And Amy is not a Rotarian. She's from Houston, Texas. We grew up together. Um, her son is on a peace fellowship through Harvard. They were, um, the summer, actually it was spring, um, her family was taking him to Africa, to Amin, Africa, where he was doing his peace fellowship. And as every good parent, she and her husband spent quite a bit of time there. They toured, they went on a safari, they got to eat all the fantastic foods and be treated into all the palaces. I mean, they just had a great, great tours. She was touring this one city and it was all built on stilts out over a lake. And they were, they were by boat, they were being escorted around and they were touring. So she's snapping all these pictures. And of course, I think Alan and some other people have noticed I'm on Facebook a lot. Um, I do run 13 pages for my company. So I am on Facebook on purpose a lot, but I was looking and I kept seeing Amy's pictures. And when she was on this tour in Africa, the rotary wheel was on the side of all these houses. She's not a Rotarian, but somehow she kept capturing pictures of the rotary wheel over and over and over again. So I sent her a message because now we can do that because of things like WhatsApp and Facebook so we can communicate with our friends from around the world. I sent her a picture and I said, you know, you keep capturing these rotary symbols. She goes, I don't even know what rotary is. So she got a long lesson. I mean, and, and, and now she knows and now her son knows what rotary is. Um, but I said, can you find out what those wheels are? Well, it turns out those houses were all above the lake that provides the water and the fish for the community. Those houses were all above it. So before Rotary was involved, and before Rotary built those um, sanitation and water cleansing devices, the people were using dirty water, polluted water, and fishing out of it. So they say Rotary did this. So Rotary through some of the um, global grants built, whoops, <laughs> built water sanitation 
um, devices on all those houses so that people could live healthy and have clean water, clean drinking water, and were no longer defecating in the lakes that they were going to be fishing in. How cool. So that was, so, that was just a ran, random pictures on my Facebook. And Rotary is very impactful in that community, was what I found out later. Actually, now Amy's son is, it goes to Rotary meetings very regularly because in his Peace Fellowship, he's there for a year. So that was a way to get to know impactful people in the community. Pretty cool, right? So another thing that happened, and this one is probably my most personal. I keep having Rotary moments. I do. I have them over and over. For me, Rotary International Assembly, when you're a district governor elect, it happens once a year. And um, you go, it used to be in California, now it's in um, Florida, but we go and it's for the 529 of us that are district governors or about to become district governors. So we get to hang out, we're, we go to classes all day, but you get to know all the other district governors from around the world, right? So I have very good friends in other countries now, some of them surprising. Um, our zones, zones 30 and 31, which are basically the Midwest, we've gotten to know each other very well. We hang out, we go meet each other. We've actually done trips together that weren't rotary related, but we, we, we're, we become really close. So when we were at International Assembly, our zone hung out a lot with this zone that includes Croatia and Turkey and Jordan and Palestine and that part of the country or that part of the world. Um, fun fact separate, we're about to build a new peace location in Turkey because it has such access to the Middle East. So another rotary thing, but not, not as related as what I'm gonna tell you. So, um, so anyway, we became very close. We had our dinners, we had drinks, we danced, we hung out a lot with the people, with Suncha from Croatia, with Ada from Turkey, with Bashir from um, Jordan. And they all became really close friends. This was in January. I've got some of the best pictures with Ada and she's as active on social media as I am. So any of you that are on my page and see all that, she's, Ada is that way as well. What happened in February in Turkey? Anyone? Earthquakes, right? Devastating earthquakes. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people. It was called the thousand year devastation in that area. And I, I don't know that I'm translating it right, but when you use English translation, that's what they called it. So my friend Ada, who all of our zone has became very close to, Ada completely disappeared from social media. She's super active. By the way, she's a journalist in Turkey. So she was right in the middle of all the action, but disappeared. So we're texting and we're phone calling, and we're messaging and using WhatsApp and all that. And I talked to Suncha in Croatia. I talked to Bashir. We all were, I went back through all of my pictures to find out who else was in that zone and who else I could contact. Nobody heard from Ada at all. So, you know, we start thinking the worst. Thousands of people died in Turkey. Um, five days went by. And Ada's very first posts on social media were of Rotarians setting up shelter boxes and helping pull people from the devastation. It was amazing to me. When you need hope, Rotarians can create hope in the world. And um, to me, that's the most personal story because she's back. I mean, we're, we're, we're communicating and she has got as many pictures. It's almost like a contest. She's got as many rotary pictures as I do, but she's creating hope in an entire country. She's meeting with their um, politicians and with their, all their leaders. I mean, and, and being in a journalist in a country that's been devastated, but every picture of her is happy now. But to me, it was really special that five days, no one heard from her. And the very first pictures, and she did lose several family members and friends. But the very first pictures weren't of her family. It wasn't, hey, we're okay. It was literally of Rotarians helping setting up shelter boxes. It's impactful. 
because that's special. <laughs> so, and um, I can say the Rotary Foundation also, right here in our own community or in our own district, just approved 19 district grants. All of the grants that were applied for were approved. That includes the one here in your, in your club, which I know is working on shorelines and I may get that a little bit wrong, but of the lake. So working on the environment. So you guys, the Rotary Foundation to me is the way, the, the way we make such an impact. We couldn't do it without your support. We couldn't do that without somebody getting the next Paul Harris or becoming the next major donor. And so I, I do have pretty major goals and significant goals in our district. Um, last year, our the Rotary Foundation giving was 192,000. Our goal this year is 220,000. So real quick math people, that's about a 15% increase. So I am gonna ask everybody to look at what you can do personally into the Rotary Foundation. Think about stories, find your own story, find your own place that Rotary makes a difference in your life and the things that you can really believe in. And go, is that worth that to me? It is to me. I know the impact that it makes. I have my Rotary stories. You guys, I, I know that we can in an instant be impactful in the things that need to happen. And then I'm so proud that we get to do it locally too. So I do look at everybody. Um, if you, district, district people might know this, that's about $150 per person. But I want everyone to think, you guys are a nice giving club. I want everyone to think of 15% more than in the past. So if you're new, learn more about the Rotary Foundation. It'll make you, you'll, you'll, you'll feel it. You'll feel it from your heart. Um, it gives, I'm also gonna talk about membership, but we do have a training September 9th in Bloomington here at Ivy Tech. And one of the breakouts is on the foundation. And so I encourage anyone that has interest in learning more about our foundation, that would be a great place to start. So I, I, I encourage you to do that. Also in our district, we have just under 1,500 members district-wide. I'm talking to the club that just grew by 50%. <laughs> um, but we, our, our goal is to grow from um, 1,500, which we're just under, to about 1,650. So again, that's another, that's a 10% growth. I expect y'all to do better than that because you already are. <laughs> so don't slow down. <laughs> so, but the only way to do that is to engage your members. And it's to, for people to learn more about Rotary and people to have their own Rotary moments and people to find their passion within Rotary. And you guys have a lot of passionate people. So I want you to really think about why you're a Rotarian. What's your passion? You guys, I um, want us to remember, create hope in the world and um, what it means. Always glow a light. And I like to end just by saying, hey, people are attracted to things that glow. They really are. So let's glow together. Let's grow together. And let's create an amazing impact through our Rotary. So thank you, guys. Who's with me? Hey, thank you guys. And I have just a couple of goodies. Jim gave me a list, but if I try and read off my list of people to recognize, I'm gonna miss some. So I'm gonna give you guys an assignment and let's figure out who the three newest Rotarians in the room are. I know one, <laughs> come on up. I wanna get a picture with the three newest Rotarians. And it doesn't mean you're the newest Rotarians in the club. It just means it's the newest Rotarians in the room. Come on up. Caleb and Forrest, probably. You guys, that's only two. There's somebody. Who else is under a year? Forrest. There you go. Wilson. Where was Wilson? There you go. Can we have more? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Come on in. Absolutely. 
Where are you going to to take a picture? <laughs> Actually, somebody grab one of those. The glow yeah. broke. Yeah. <laughs> oops, oh, oops. Oh, you got to grab it from the base. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Everybody give me the camera. I want to get a little, little closer. We do have time for questions, Shannon. Anybody have a question? No questions. Hello. So I've been in Rotary for a while and love it. But I'm wondering, since you mentioned you have um, a marketing field that is your profession, I presume, right? Yep. So I'm wondering what you think Rotary could do marketing-wise to help itself grow. You know, that's a loaded question <laughs> because every club has its own autonomy, right? But the rotary wheel is the most recognized wheel in the world. Now, is that true in Bloomington? Is it true in Southern Indiana? Probably not. I mean, we, we have other flags that probably are as recognizable, if not more. But you guys, one of the biggest things that Rotary has done, and I think it will continue with our growth, and we talked about it a little bit in um, the board meeting, you know, we used to always be very humble in Rotary, service above self, right? And service above self in itself is, is quiet. It's kind of from behind the scenes. So if you've noticed in the last few years, it's really changed to people of action. And Rotary is people of action. It still does, it's service above self is still there. But if you really focus on the people of action and you keep shining, that's why I like this glow grow. <laughs> if you keep shining a light on the positive things that Rotary does, it'll help Rotary grow. And the US is, um, I believe I'm correct in saying this, the United States is the only place that's declined a little bit in um, numbers, the rest of the world is thriving. So we've got to really keep shining a light. You guys are doing a great job here. Otherwise you wouldn't be growing as, by as, fast, as quickly as you are. But if we continue just to put our rotary emblem out there and be people of action, I believe that we should yell from the rooftops, hey, I'm a Rotarian, look at me. Um, and I, I say that, and I carry around these shiny lights, you know, so, so I really do believe it's shining a light on things. And um, I had to laugh. So today I have on hot or bright pink, right? I went back through all my pictures in July and I was wearing black and white. I'm like, that's not who I am. I need to show up in Bloomington with who I am. And that's being bright and loud. And y'all, we, we need, even if it's a servant heart, we need to yell it from our rooftops and we need to make sure we're publicizing. And, you know, when we do an activity, we want our name on it. We want to say Rotary did that, or we did that. And I think that's, I think, and I'm being long-winded with it, but I think that's the biggest thing is going, even we believe in our hearts, service above self, right? And we believe obviously the four-way test, but service above self. I think we need to turn that and remember that we're rebranding as people of action. People of action is going to be at a lot more attention than being humble and behind the scenes. Shannon, <clears throat> um, we were proud of last year's district governor, our own Lance Everly, and, and we're so proud of you. Um, I guess a um, couple questions for you. You mentioned September 9th being the district assembly. Um, I was thinking ahead to uh, next spring's district conference. And can you tell us a little bit about it, where it's gonna be? And then another question, if I may, um, during my year as district governor, you were our pick to be the club president of the year. And that was the uh, theme, as you mentioned, be a gift to the world. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you did with that? I, I again, very proud of you. Absolutely, thank you. And you guys, that's what happens when you don't have your notes in front of you. So September 9th, here in Bloomington, oh, and by the way, Jim, ding, ding, ding for reminding me, you get a t-shirt um, that says Glow Grow. So, um, but September 9th here in Bloomington, our, our training 
is going to be five different areas. One is youth exchange. That's open for anybody. You guys, if you've ever thought about hosting or if you've ever, if you want to talk to a child about the possibility of doing youth exchange, Rotary has the best youth exchange in the world. It's about a $35,000 opportunity for less than $8,000. People are so well vetted and our central states youth exchange is awesome. So youth exchange is one area. Membership is another. Um, public image is another foundation and then disaster recovery and your board will probably talk to you a little bit more about that then november or october 22nd we have a free family friendly outing at lark ranch in lagodi and you guys lark ranch in lagodi is awesome they have real life trains there it's great for adults it's great for toddlers it's great for teenagers there's things for everybody you there there's like zip lines and there's a mechanical bull and there's corn mazes and apple shooters and all this fun stuff, but we're gonna do pumpkins for polio that day. So um, we'll have a polio tent where you can come and just say, hey, I'm a Rotarian, I'm welcome, but every Rotarian gets in for free. By the way, I still think you should donate though, once you're in. <laughs> it's a polio foundation event, um, but we'll also be able to collect from the public at that, it'll be fun. And we haven't done a family friendly um, district-wide event in a long time. Lagodi's not that far from here. So I, um, I highly recommend it. Their doors open at 11, they close at six, it's on a Sunday. We're gonna try and get together around two just to have a yay rotary moment with that and a little polio talk. Then November 17th in Center Grove, we have a Friends of the Foundation event. And then you guys, I'm so glad Jim said something. Um, first, you know, I like to glow and shine. And I think things that are bright are fun. And I, I like things that glow. On, everyone get out your phones, your papers, your calendars, whatever you need to do. April 20th, next year, April 20th, 2024, we're going to have the best darn district conference ever. And um, just, just look, we like things that glow and things that shine. So that might give you a hint. And y'all, we had a great district conference in this building. We had a great district conference in Terre Haute, but I started talking at the very beginning that I'm competitive, right? So I am, um, and I like things that glow and shine. So I want, and my goal is to have the best district conference ever. And um, I think that you guys will find that to be when you all show up April 20th, two hours down 69, it'll take, right at two hours to get to Old National Events Plaza and be there for the day. The direct shot, you only actually, once you get on 69 from here, there's only two more turns. So <laughs> how easy is that? So put it on your calendar right now. Um, we have a great, we have great speakers also, and um, we're gonna have great breakouts. Yes. Connie, your question? Yes, I just, Shannon, I just, <laughs> I just want to know how you remain so fabulously enthusiastic and wonderful, and you're just one of the best people I know. <laughs> Connie, that's awesome. So, so Connie and I know each other. I know some of y'all in the room, too. Um, I said earlier when I was talking, the more you know about Rotary, the more you want to know. So I'm going to turn this into a Rotary answer. Because the more you know about Rotary, the more you want to know, and the more you want to know, and the more you learn, the more excited you get. And everybody probably has that in them. Not everyone has my energy. I know I drink a lot of caffeine. Um, <laughs> I really do. But, um, but that's just who I am. And I get super excited the more I learn about Rotary. It actually becomes, it becomes something that I'm engaged with. And y'all, it's, it, it's changed my life. And I know that um, one of the reasons is that I hang out with people like y'all, that you, everyone has a great servant heart and everybody, Rotarians are so great and we all wanna make a difference. And so, Connie, I hope that answers it. I love Rotary, that's why. <laughs> and Rotary loves you. Thank you. <laughs> We've had one meeting about it so far, so. Um, one of our technology people is right over here. 
So we'll um, we'll address that we'll address that next time. I can promise you that um, you'd rather be there face to face. I promise you would rather, and, and it's super accessible. You guys, Old National Events Plaza, where we're gonna meet for our bigger meetings and House of Friendship is right above all the breakouts. And there's an escalator and elevator and steps, and the hotel is attached to, that we can stay at. So if you wanna spend the night, it's attached with a, with a walkway between it. So I promise there's not a lot of walking and that you will leave enlightened, engaged, and excited. And I will share something about our evening speaker. He is, he's from California and he puts together events and he likes things that glow and grow. So you'll wanna be there face to face. So I don't know the answer to that yet. One more, and I know it's almost one. So we gotta, okay. The question was posed by someone who will be out of the country on a rotary, uh, scholarship, I believe. Megan. Oh, was that Megan? Megan, we'll see. Yeah, it was me. We'll see what we can do for you. You're going to be having an experience of a lifetime. So, yeah. uh, so we may just have to figure out how to like, even if we don't do everything on Zoom, um, I'll carry you around on my phone and show you everything. I don't know. Deal. <laughs> figure out something. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. Congratulate, oh, sorry. Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Connie Shackless. She is the lead in on Golden Pond at the Nashville Country Playhouse. And we saw it on Saturday night and I just have to congratulate her because she was amazing. The show itself is also wonderful. So congratulations, Connie. Oh, thank Hi. you very much. That for you. That's awesome. And I think we've got time for one last one, right? Are you not related? Okay. Oh, it's an announcement. So you guys, thank you for the warm welcoming. Thank you so much. And y'all let's glow together, grow together and make an impact in Rotary. Thanks. You not only bring glowing items to this district, you bring energy to this district. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. In honor of your uh, visit with us today, we're making a contribution to Stone Belt on your behalf. So. Thank you for being with us and sharing both your energy and your goals for our district. I would like to have all of the people that have been in leadership roles in our district over the past few years stand and be recognized. I know we have past governors, we have assistant governors, we've had people on committees. Please stand and be recognized by our club. We do have an announcement from the Sunrise Club about a change of venue. Yes, just wanted to let everyone know in case you'd like to come visit us and we'd love to have you that um, has moved to Meadowood. We are in the group meeting room at Meadowood. It's uh, easy to get there, lots of parking and uh, we're excited to have a, a new permanent home. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sorry, 7 a.m. on Wednesdays. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to thank some of our members who really helped participate in today's meeting. Greer Carson, who was our greeter. Steve Engel, who introduced our guests. Our Zoom host was Tracy, who always does such a good job. Not Zoom host, but microphone uh, and uh, helps get everybody on camera when they ask a question. Uh, our reporter this year, this month, and I guess this week, Sarah Laughlin. Our, uh, I'm not sure what happened to Roger. We were, or Raj, we were corresponding about his reflection. I hope he's okay. And obviously, uh, Tyler Martin Nichols as our Zoom producer. And again, the Zoom host today, Michael Shermas, who was kind of wearing several hats and pulled it off with, without any problem. Our, our next meeting is gonna be kind of exciting. It's next Tuesday in Stateroom East, and it's also gonna be on Zoom. Our speaker will be Allison Barber. She's the Indiana Fever president and CEO. So it ought to be a real exciting meeting. So Tyler, will you put up the four-way test? Again, the four-way, let's stand, the four-way test of the things we think or do. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? First, is it goodwill and better friendships? 
Fourth, will be beneficial to all. And fifth, is it fun? <laughs>